Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a video showing how I use the dealer data I always talk about on this channel, along with price action to take high confidence setups. I personally pair this data with ICT smart money concepts, and I believe the dealer and dark pool data I always post about pair so well with this concept because the data is just giving insight to the underlying market maker positioning, which ICT concepts help us identify by simply looking at price. Regardless, even if you don't like ICT smart money concepts, you can still make use of this data by doing what I'm going to show you in this video. Before we get started, I'll leave several discount codes for trading services I use in the description, including TradeEdix, Falland, and Elite Trader Fund. Lastly, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. That being said, let's get into it. So this was actually a really great trading week. Uh, we had a big market sell up. I mean, it's, it's not great for the economy. It's not great news, of course, overall, uh, especially because it's costing people their jobs and things of that nature. But regardless, for a trader, it was a phenomenal week. And once again, this data just proved to be insanely accurate. So here we go on how we can actually apply it to our real trading with uh, and combine this stuff with price action. So in my Twitter post in the morning, this was Friday morning, March 10th, final day of the trading week. And pretty much every day uh, went, went similar to this one. So we could see that Vanna had a large amount of positive Vanna skewed to the downside, meaning that if IV is rising, price will have an easier time magneting to this area, basically moving down than it would moving up into all this negative Vanna, right? So price was just going to have an easier time moving down. Charm showed the same thing uh, based off of having basically SPY and SPX, both, both were majority positive Charm which was uh, I talked about here, but this is what I really want to get into. So we already know that price is going to have a hard, hard time moving higher. So now if we look at the gamma levels, I talk about the, the notable positive GEX levels. So we have 3,900 on SPX. That was a big one. And uh, I also mark a chart that I share as well, which I'll talk about in a second. And then we also talk about positive GEX on SPY, how SPY 393 was a big one. And you can see we have all this negative gamma. Now this played a major part on Thursday. We actually fell below this area rather quickly with all the dealer assistance happening. Then these popped up on Friday, these two little towers, and we opened in between them. And I'm gonna show you why this was important and how it helped me uh, take some great trades. And so then we look at the Delta correlations, which if you add this stuff together was actually pretty neutral, uh, dark pool. Uh, data actually conflicted with Vanna, which made me think that we might have been where we I knew we probably weren't going to get above 393, but I didn't think we would have as big of a fall as we did, big of continuation, which is actually a bad thing. So I talk about how both Vanna and Charm fa favoring a bearish move. However, dark pool sentiment has shifted. The bullish and gamma below spot is supportive, and we'll get into that shortly. Uh, and so it usually means consolidation similar to last Wednesday which would explain the Delta data. And then when we opened up, so we had M NFP that morning, which I also called out in the post. And this is what I share. Now, this is a screenshot of my spy chart that I share with everyone that you can access from this Twitter post. And you can see positive gamma at 393 is resistance because where a price is under it, we push into it. Dealers are selling against that move higher and we stay under it. Of course, when NFP initially opened, we went down, we swept li liquidity down here positive gamma at 389 calls dealer buying and resisted this move lower into it. And so this was the range. And that's what I called out was basically saying that I'm expecting us to stay within this range. And uh, that basically, if, if we do break out of that range, uh, that that, uh, you know, that would be rather significant. And I talk about that there is additional positive gex to be aware of under uh, 383, or excuse me, 389. So if we go to the chart that I share, this is where it starts getting really interesting. So this is what I share with everyone. I have VIX so we can see the impact VIX is having so we can keep that Vanna in mind, right? We know that if uh, VIX is rising in that environment that I just showed you, price will have a very easy time dropping. And then when VIX is falling because negative Vanna is above spot, price will have a harder time rising because even though uh, IV is, is dropping, which usually means in a positive Vanna environment, dealers would be buying, it actually means dealers are hindering that move higher because they're selling. So it's just something to be aware of. And then we can see here, I have SPX and SPY. And actually I had, I have DXY up as well by default with some markings on it. But the, the important ones I want to talk about are SPY and SPX and how they played a part. So we can see, let me just make this bigger and we'll zoom in here. So this is what it looks like. If you pull up this chart, this was the NFP move where we saw 393, the positive gamma was resistance. 
started moving down and this is where things get interesting so we just kind of move through 389 and we come back up and then we we kind of teeter around it and we move higher and finally reject off 393 now let me show you what i was looking at on es during the time this was happening and if we flip over to spx just to talk about that for a second during this same time period and we can see that this is where we opened we dropped down that level where it kind of looked like we were holding nothing on spy so if we go back to right around here where it appears like we're holding nothing we go back we can see this is actually positive gamma and spx and that's why it's important to watch both of these so we can see it was 3880 now as many of you probably already know i trade futures so this is how i was using it now what this is my futures chart this this uh if you, if you watch ICT, he talks about these new week opening gaps, which are important to Mark. So this was a new week. These purple lines were a new week opening gap. And then we also have, uh, I mark a one hour fair value gap in blue behind here. I don't want to get into how all these work. Uh, you can check out his channel. I have some stuff on it too, but of course, the best place to get it from is the source. And then we also have a new week opening gap down here. Now, what I did is I took SPY's price. So we have that 393 positive gex level and all you really have to do is if you divide the es opening price by the spy opening price you get a multiplier and then if you take that multiplier and multiply it by 393 you get es's converted price and i actually do have an indicator that can do this for you if you just search convert etf i, I don't use it. i like manually plotting it because it keeps me more in tune with what's going on same with a lot of these smart money concepts plus um yeah, it just it keeps me more in, in balance with what I'm actually trading. But so we can see SPY 393 positive GEX was right around 393, 3.75 on ES. But we also have, so we had this NFP move. We come up, we have this break of structure, this sell-off. Up here means an order block was created from this sell-off, which is right in line with that positive gamma on SPY which I don't think was a coincidence. And I don't think it's a coincidence because I see this every happen every single day. It always happens like this, where these key areas on the chart are always perfectly in line with the dealer data positioning. And that's what I'm trying to drive home in this video is that it's, it's almost like we can see the manipulation that's happening. We have data that's validating that there is indeed strong manipulation happening and we can confirm it in both price action and by looking at the underlying dealer data. So sure enough, we fall through, we fall through this new week opening gap. We come down. This was the SPX 3880. Right now, ES and SPX's prices are right in line with each other because we're getting close to the March ex expiration of the futures contracts. However, when those contracts roll over, there will be a big difference in ES and SPX price. So you need to make sure you do some simple math by subtracting the two if you want to overlay SPX's levels on top of ES's levels. In this case, we don't need to do any math. So 38.80 on ES was also the SPX positive gamma level that I just talked about right here. And sure enough, it was right in line with a new week opening gap, which is an ICT smart money concept all the way back from December 26. And I don't, he has a whole video that he actually just released on these that, that I recommend checking out. But uh, essentially what this is, is every night or on Friday night into Sunday morning, there's typically a gap that forms a gap, gap in price and future es futures pricing if you mark this gap you'll notice that price tends to gravitate gravitate between these new week opening gaps and what's even more fascinating that i've noticed consistently and i'm telling you it's every day and if you start paying attention to this stuff you'll notice it too is that they're always right in line with either positive gamma levels so significant dealer levels or oftentimes these gray lines i'm drawing here are dark pool levels and more often than not, if they're not in line with a positive gamma level, they're right in line with a dark pool level. And that's just fascinating to me because the, these dark pool levels and these dealer, the, the dealer gamma levels are all coming from market makers. And ICT claims that, that his concepts are purely using price action to identify what market makers are doing uh, behind the scenes, how they're manipulating price. And so when these two things add up this way, in my mind, this is just confirmation. I've been watching ICT for a long time now. I know he's gotten really popular as of late, and I'm, that's fantastic. I'm happy, happy to see that because I think he can do a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, but dealer data, I've 
really only been looking at heavily for about a year now. I've, I've been looking at ICT stuff for longer than that. And um, seeing how these two came, came together, it's just, it just blows my mind. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So anyway, so we hold this positive gamma level on SPX, which is also right in line with the new week opening gap. Come back up. This is just called IOFED. It's a fair value gap. We hold that as support. Come right back up. And where do we go? We go to this order block created from NFP this morning and the SPY 393 positive GEX level, which you can also see on the SPY chart here. And then this ended up being the high of the day, uh, which I was very happy about, especially since I called it out in my tweet, potentially saying that this would likely be the high I expect price to stay under this. So we just rapidly sell off from here. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. When we come down, I was actually uh, a bit surprised that we broke this uh, 3880 so easily, but that's okay. When that happens, when we get a clean break like this, if price were to come back up and retest it, it's positive gamma. So before, when price was coming down, dealers were buying, slowing this move. If it gets broken at that point, if we price comes back to retest, dealers are now selling. So just remember that positive gamma acts as, uh, in a way, traditional support and resistance, where uh, where a break and a retest oftentimes results in, you know, support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. So we fall through this new week opening gap quickly. And now you'll notice this red, this pink dotted line I have here, and I have it labeled positive order block weekly 1031 CE. So this is an, another ICT concept. And, and just to quickly tell you what that means. Uh, so if we go to the weekly chart, we can see we have this order block here from October 31st. And if you measure this with Fibonacci, you can actually see the 50% mark is right where I marked that pink, that pink dotted line basically. And C East, the 50% mark, uh, ICT refers to that as consequent encroachment. It's just the 50% mark of either a fair value gap or a new week opening gap or an order block. And it's often time where we will see market makers respond, right? And so as we come back down here, though, notice 3850 is a large gamma level on SPX. And we come down and we hold it perfectly. And sure enough, if we look at at ES, that's also right in line with that weekly order block, which again, happens all the time. These levels are always on top of each other or right next to each other. Oftentimes it's to the tick. This hold wasn't as clean. This one certainly was, but so we come under positive GEX does its thing along with the order block. So we know that market makers are likely going to be involved when we see these, these concepts right on top of each other. We know that they're, they're going to, have, they're going to be injecting liquidity, essentially, or they're going to be injecting, uh, they're going to buy orders in order to get up. And, and honestly, in this case, they, a lot of, a lot of stops were ran on the way down. There was a lot of liquidity hunting on this move down. We move up. And so sure enough, we have that positive GEX level we've been talking about on SPX and it's right in line with this new week opening gap. And that's where we initially bounce. We hold a uh, fair value gap, come higher. Hold another this fair value gap was all the way from earlier in the day uh, was one that was another uh institutional order order entry drill uh so anyway we hold that come back down retest that positive gamma level and move back up but why i find this so fascinating because again this happens all the time and it's uh we have this the dealer data just confirming what we are, are planning when we're looking at smart money concepts market maker uh, identifying market maker positioning through both price action and uh, options data and they just go hand in hand together and I'll, I'll do um, what I can to show you guys more examples again this happens with positive gamma it happens when there is just a we're basically in a net neutral area of gamma meaning that the positive gamma is canceling out the negative gamma we can also see this um, with uh, with uh, the dark pool the levels oftentimes where we where it's basically to the cent a dark pool level on spy Will essentially hold as support and you go and look at your es chart and sure enough it lines up with a, a new week opening gap or an order block and, and there's a ton of these concepts rejection blocks mitigation blocks breaker blocks uh fair value gaps all that stuff and i'm not, not going to go through all of them here and, and like i said um, ict has a ton of in-depth videos on these concepts but they just line up super well and but despite that even if you don't 
use ICT concepts, right? Even if you're just using supply, demand, support, and resistance. Um, uh, you know, I love volume profile too. I always keep volume on, uh, and I and I run volume profile out of my trade evade account, which is where I also place my orders because I like their brackets better. And so, uh, all this all this stuff. However you however you want to use it, the 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 dealer levels just pair so well with the actual trading. And this is how I use them to prep. And that's why I do these posts every day because one, I, I really do like putting it out there and having discussions about it. And, and it does feel good to help people out. But also, I mean, I legitimately use this this data to prepare for my trading every single day. And this is just insight into how I combine it with uh, my personal, the price action concepts that I find value in, how I, how I pair the two together in order to take great trades throughout the day. So anyway, uh, uh, like I said, I'll try to do this on a regular basis to give you some ideas on how you can apply it to your trading. Uh, it doesn't have to be the one, the, the same way that I do it, but because there is more than one way to skin a cat. So hopefully you get something out of this and hopefully you got the wheels turning. And I uh, really appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.